This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome Dr. David Gerlach, Associate Professor and Chair, History Department, and the Director of the Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies at St. Peter's University. Good to see you, Doctor. Oh, thank you for having me. Break it down. Um, it's been 75 years. The Holocaust still matters because? Uh, I think it's, well, I mean, particularly today, we see the rise of ethno-nationalism, the resurgence of anti-Semitism, uh, xenophobia, even racism in our own country and in Europe. And I think um, it goes to show these are part of the human condition, really. And these are the ideological bases, if you will, uh, for projects that lead to genocide. And so, you know, while geno genocide itself is, is an extreme event, of course, I think there's an important um, role that a center like this can play in trying to make sure that we're aware of the dynamics of genocide and, and the kind of being able to uh, address the, the underlying circumstances that appear again and again in our world to try to, you know, prevent, prevent that from happening again. You know, the term genocide, mm -hmm. used a lot. Mm -hmm. Define it in a way that people can operationalize it in their heads and, more importantly, in their hearts. Well, if we go back, uh, again, I'm a historian, so if we go back, you know, the originator of the term, Raphael Lemkin, um, got this passed in, into the United Nations, the, the uh, Convention on, on the Prevention of Genocide back in 1948. And I think the key really is the idea, the intent uh, is kind of the key word, the intent to destroy or wipe out a group of people based on their ethnic, religious backgrounds. Um, and so for me, what that means in practice is looking at how minorities are generally treated in, in societies um, where uh, again, there might be other kinds of things like war or economic dislocations and, and things like that that are going to lead to uh, further problems for these kinds of minorities down the road. And so they become targets, uh, if you will, for, for these projects. Describe the work violence. of the center. What do you see the center doing in terms of making a difference? Um, the mission for the center is sort of threefold. So education's at the forefront. We need to understand and teach our students and community about the history of genocide and about, um, you know, and that's done by bringing in speakers and, and developing courses and things like that. Uh, I think the second part is research. Um, this is something we'll have to build on. My own research is in that area a bit, but uh, we'd like not only faculty but students to take up uh, research on this topic so that, again, generations from now, um, <clears throat> this isn't forgotten. And then the third part for us at St. Peter's is um, about service. And so this goes to the mission of the school. The Jesuit University yeah, that exactly. you are. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Jesuit mission, which is not just to talk about right. religion right. and to know it, but to live it. Go ahead. Right. Well, and I think, it, yeah, and, and to, to build on that, to, to serve others, right? And so um, while, you know, again, it, it might not be seen as kind of seamless or, or directly related to genocide, um, I want to get our students working with refugees and uh, thinking about how they might have an impact uh, on these groups that I was referring to earlier, the minority groups that are targeted and things like that. And so last semester, for example, I ran a service learning course. We partnered with some local um, organizations, uh, First Friends New York, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. There's a small group in uh, Jersey City called Welcome Home. And they work, uh, both groups really, to try to address issues of, well, asylum seekers and refugees. Uh, to get them help, to get them integrated in society. And so what we do in the classroom is read and talk about and discuss and learn about the past. But for the students, I think what's <clears> most <throat> valuable uh, is that they get, to, they get to interact with some of these people. And again, it's maybe not perfect, you know, uh, but... What well, is? I mean, the point well, is you're exposing them. But, but I, I exactly. want to shift yeah. gears on something. Yeah. Teaching about, helping people, students understand more about genocide on the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. What do you see, Doctor, in terms of the national discourse around these topics and other related topics, dare I say it, in the age of Donald Trump? Well, like I said, I mean, on, on the one hand, we might look at, at the Trump era as, um, I don't want to say it this way exactly, but I'll say it as a positive. It pulled back the veil a bit to show that these... On added, what? On the fact that a lot of people hold these anti-Semitic views and that, um, again, the, the kind of 
uh, white nationalism, if you will, if we're talking about the United States. But you're not um, saying the president is a white nationalist. You're not saying the president is anti-Semitic. You said helped pull the veil back on it. Well, I think it's part of a much broader... I, th I think the problem with saying it's just Trump is that our attention goes only to that, and I think it's much broader than that. I think, again, there, there are um, these, these ideas, okay, these beliefs, this, this ignorance is widespread. Of the other? Mm-hmm, exactly. Has he helped or hurt? I, I think both. I mean, you know, part of the job of these centers and so forth is to try to combat exactly <clears throat> this kind, these kinds of ideas. Um, Trump himself, though, I, I think, you know, again, he, he's not helping uh, because the divisiveness just continues to grow in this country. What does that do with genocide? Well, uh... Um, We're not talking about wiping out entire groups true. of people based, true. On, based on their ethnicity right. or where they're from. It, no. Is that not apples and oranges? Well, uh, to a degree, I don't want to. I don't want to be, you know, get into the game of false equivalencies. But I, I do believe that again, gen there are a lot of dynamics that lead to genocide. And part of the earliest part are these ideas, divisive ideas that, you know, again, target the other, and look to uh, make scapegoats of minorities. Mm. Yes, it's, you know, maybe this doesn't lead to genocide, but it can lead to other kinds of repression and, and, and problems. Part of the idea of the centers is to try to build tolerance, you know, and again, you don't see that, you don't think about that when you think about the word genocide, but it's sort of the, the other goal here. So sw switch gears here. <clears throat> the use of language. Mm -hmm. Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez um, in New York used the term, quote, concentration camps mm -hmm. to describe immigrant detention centers. Right. Is it, from your academic scholarly perspective, I wonder who understands the Holocaust, mm -hmm. genocide, et cetera, inappropriate use of the language concentration camp? Again, I don't... Is it, are they concentration camps? No, technically they're not. Um, they're, they're nothing like what we saw in World War II, uh, for Does example, Does it confuse things as to what was and what is? No, again, I don't think I would accuse her of a false equivalency here. I think that, again, context matters a lot. She's trying to use that language to draw attention to a policy that is, um, again, detrimental to a certain group of people. And I think that to use that term, it, again, it's not in order to downplay what happened to the Jews or, or the meaning of these concentration camps. And can't, in, in fact, quite the opposite, right? It's to draw our attention to the fact that this is a policy that is hurting people and that needs to be addressed. That's simple. I mean, putting people in mm -hmm. those facilities, mm -hmm. which also includes other part of it is the separation of children from their sure, families. exactly. Pa part of a larger debate, is it not? Absolutely. I have to tell you, the center is open. As we do this program in the fall of 2019, the center is opening. It's the Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies at St. Peter's University. We actually have a very important, significant relationship with that university and other institutions of higher learning. And uh, Dr. David Gerlach, I want to thank you for joining us and adding such an important perspective. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right there. This one-on-one. -on -one. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Hackensack Meridian Health, the New Jersey Education Association, PSENG, the Russell Berry Foundation, the Northward Center, United Airlines, TD Bank, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, and by Adler Aphasia Center. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and by Tap Into TV. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.